Sharps, NICAM CTV, with Dolby Surround. True World Multi with NTSC Tuna and 800 line high resolution has transcended the boundary of AV experience. Excuse me, miss, 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 y yes, it's me, and I'm talking to you. You're Miss, uh, you're Miss White, aren't you? How would you like to join me for a look at what goes on behind the scenes to bring you the best picture quality yet from a big screen TV? Picture quality is the most important factor when selecting a big screen TV. First, please push the button mark standard to reset the picture mode to flat. That's it. Thank you. Welcome inside a Pioneer TV monitor. There are plenty of ingredients in there if you'd like to make something to eat. Maybe you'd rather have a pizza delivered instead. Mm, no, food always tastes better when you make it yourself, don't you think? When we talk about picture quality in a TV monitor, the most crucial element is color reproduction. How closely objects displayed resemble the real ones. For example, does the onion she's holding look as fresh as a real one? Not too yellow and not too fuzzy. Does it look crisp and real? The same is true with the other vegetables. Excuse me, Miss White. Could you show us the other vegetables? Thanks a lot. On a good TV monitor, vegetables should look as fresh and delicious as those in your kitchen. Foods are a good reference object to measure the quality of image reproduction. If those being displayed can stimulate your appetite, you have a good monitor. Another good subject for checking picture quality is the human face. A good monitor can reproduce skin textures as natural and lifelike as the real thing, even in a bright setting like this. Give us a big smile, please. Image reproduction refers to the overall performance of a monitor. To achieve top quality image reproduction, a monitor must possess superb specifications throughout, including focus, contrast, and color rendition. Thanks to a number of innovative technologies, this year's lineup of Pioneer ProVision monitors boasts better balanced, more realistic images than ever before. Let me introduce you to just some of the important features that ensure high quality image reproduction. First is focus. She's, well, I guess she's busy cooking. Let's take a look at this scene. That's so beautiful, isn't it? This field of flowers can help measure the focusing power of a TV. Does every flower in this field look sharp and crisp to you? To improve the focusing accuracy, Pioneer has incorporated a low magnifying power lens in its new ProVision series. At the same time, our new digital convergence system eliminates color convergence errors, even at the corners. 
Whoops! I wonder what she's doing now. She should still be in the kitchen. The ProVision's outstanding focusing power is evident in this picture too. See the variety of objects at the corners, all in sharp, crisp focus. I thought you were cooking in the kitchen, Miss White, but you've already helped yourself to the wine, I see. Anyway, you've moved to the right spot. Do you see the mini blinds on the windows behind Miss White? With conventional projection TVs, horizontal lines are often indistinct with jagged edges. This is caused by a focusing problem known as dot crawl. Take a look at her apron. See the minute video noise as she moves? Now, let's take a look at the flower field again. Even as the scene changes, noise is not evident. Pioneer's ProVision series is equipped with an innovative three-line digital comb filter to minimize color bleed caused by such noise. Wow, that looks delicious, Miss White. If you have a TV with outstanding focusing power, a steak can look as delicious and juicy as this. Now that dinner's ready, I think it's time to change the atmosphere too. Miss White, would you please turn around a second? Keep turning! Let's take a look at contrast next. Doesn't she look elegant? Someone in a pure white dress against a jet black background on a conventional projection TV would be outlined by a halo of gray. But take a look at this. Pioneer's ProVision series can produce unmatched contrast between pure white and true black, thanks to its newly developed high contrast black screen. To create a beautiful picture, projection monitors are required to produce high contrast images where the lighter spots are reproduced brighter while the darker spots appear darker. Sorry to make you wait so long, Miss White. I've made a reservation at a gorgeous restaurant just for you. Even though projection monitors are basically designed to produce high contrast images, many still have difficulties in reproducing sharp details in dark scenes. This can best be checked by watching a nighttime scene. How about a toast, Miss White? Cheers! Whoops! I almost forgot! My story on picture quality isn't over yet. You must have been tired of staying indoors, so I brought you to a tropical beach. Now, what do you think about this place? We have seen some examples of detail reproduction in dark scenes. Now, I want you to take a look at the detail in this bright scene. With other projection monitors, the white areas of the image, such as her dress and the clouds, are often reproduced with a yellowish tint. To reproduce pure white, Pioneer invented the linear white circuitry for our ProVision series. What do you think? As you can see, Pioneer offers you natural, more realistic imagery production by achieving the highest levels of focus and contrast. 
Of course, color is one of the most important factors in image reproduction. And with Pioneer's High Contrast ProVision Series, you can always enjoy true-to-life colors. Welcome home, Miss White. How was your trip inside your TV monitor? Whoa! I think it may be cold, but would you like a piece of pizza? You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams. RCA 52-inch projection screen home theater. It's bigger and brighter than almost anything out there. As everybody knows, there's more than one way to look at the world. And Sony's world-renowned Trinitron TVs are well worth looking into. <laughs> Capturing the legendary sharpness and clarity of Trenatron technology on a screen this big is an accomplishment we're proud of. So is creating the technology to build them. The process begins with the screen itself, which starts out as a clear glass panel. At this point, there are actually two assembly lines which move in tandem, one for the glass panels and one for the metal frames which hold the aperture grille inside. Sony's proprietary aperture grill technology is what makes a Sony TV look the way only a Sony TV can look. In reality, the aperture grill is a carbon steel mask composed of hundreds of precisely registered strips. When the grill is in place behind the TV screen, these ultra-thin metal strips act as a rigid alignment guide to ensure that electrons fired at the screen strike their exact target to create a crystal clear image. Once the aperture grill and frame have been joined together and matched with the glass panel, the completed assemblies are transported to an environmentally controlled process area. Here, the panels are specially prepared and imprinted with fine lines of black carbon. Three different sets of phosphor stripes, green, blue, and red, are then applied between the carbon lines. The glass back of the Trinitron tube, called the funnel, is joined to the panel assembly, and the electron gun is inserted. Just like the smaller tubes used in our Sony projection TVs, a vacuum is applied, and the entire CRT unit is sealed. Finally, the CRT is assembled into the chassis, along with the electronics and audio speakers. The completed unit is tested, and another top-of-the-line Sony Trinitron TV is on its way to market. You've heard the phrase, the shape of things to come. Well, at Sony, the shape of the future is flat. As in the world's first truly flat display direct TV, the FD Trinitron Vega. <laughs> the Vega's flat screen design is more than just a fashion statement. It's a combination of engineering breakthroughs that make these new Sonys flat out better. When it comes to our 32-inch and 36-inch Vega TVs, form and function go hand in hand. Where conventional curved screens can create glare and distortion at the edges of the viewing area, the Vega's flat profile and more tightly focused electron beam ensure unparalleled sharpness and detail, top to bottom and side to side, while virtually eliminating unwanted reflections. Creating the flat screen concept was the easy part. The tough part was making it practical. The first challenge was the glass itself. 
Because the picture tube encloses a vacuum, it needs to be able to withstand the pressure exerted by the air outside the tube, which, in the case of a large screen TV, can represent a force of several tons. Curved screens distribute the pressure more evenly than a flat screen, so the material in the flat screen needs to be much stronger than conventional glass. Of course, it takes more than a screen to make a picture. Other components had to be designed to maximize the new screen's performance. For example, we developed this state-of-the-art high-focus electron gun to permit distortion-free flat scanning and improve image sharpness by as much as 20%. We even improved on our own industry standard Trinitron technology with a redesigned fine pitch flat aperture grill that produces the brightest, most detailed images ever. Naturally, to bring it all together, we built the most advanced TV tube manufacturing and assembly lines in the world to build our FD Trinitron Vega. From start to finish, the Vega line sets a new benchmark for excellence in automation, quality assurance, and productivity. And it's all put together just like the world's most popular 35-inch television. Building superior products is a big part of the STCP story, but so is building a competitive company for the future. And with the addition of the American Video Glass production lines, STCP has become the world's first fully integrated manufacturer of direct view televisions. <laughs> Created as a partnership venture between Sony Electronics and Corning Asahi Video Products, the American Video Glass Manufacturing Plant is the largest and most technologically advanced facility of its kind in America. That gives us a truly sand-to-screen capability. Why do we say sand-to-screen? Well, that's because sand is the principal ingredient of the glass components that go into a Sony TV. Sand from central Pennsylvania and other raw materials arrive at the plant via truck and rail car. Here they are mixed according to proprietary Sony formulas and injected into either of two melting furnaces. Two furnaces and production lines are required because the American Video Glass Plant produces two key elements for Sony's Trinitron Direct View TVs. The funnel, which encloses the rear of the picture tube, and the panel, which is the viewing screen mounted at the front of the picture tube. After being heated to 1500 degrees centigrade, pre-measured glass loads are discharged into a mold carousel and pressed into the desired shape. The hot glass forms are then transferred to a conveyor line and allowed to cool. The partially cooled forms travel along a conveyor to a variety of robotic workstations for finishing and inspection. Up to this point, the two lines seem nearly identical, but the end products are very different. Proper shape and material integrity are essential in funnel production. That's because in the finished TV, the funnel must perform as a precision vacuum device capable of withstanding high temperatures, pressures, and mechanical stresses over the life of the product. No flaws or deviations from ultra-fine tolerances are permitted, so each funnel must undergo a battery of sophisticated visual, metric, and mechanical inspections. In contrast, panel glass is heavy, weighing as much as 80 pounds. Panel glass also differs from funnel glass in two other key respects. First, the glass formula includes chemical coloring agents that give the screen its characteristic smoky tint to enhance the quality and brightness of the color TV image. Second, since the panel glass is the viewing area of the TV, it must be finished to the same demanding optical standards as camera lenses and eyeglasses. To achieve that precision, the panels are subjected to a three-stage polishing operation. Polished panels are then inspected by a human operator to detect any physical flaws or variations in color and clarity. To ensure compliance with rigid quality and process specifications, both lines are controlled from central computer rooms, featuring state-of-the-art process control systems and software. In the end, all 
all that care pays off in specialty components that are to video glass what Sony TVs are to consumer electronics, the absolute benchmark of quality and performance. You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. Chris Thompson, meteorologist for WPTF-TV. I'll be presenting data and a forecast of a different kind for you. We call it the Metro story, and it goes a little something like this. The Raleigh-Durham Metro is known as a world-class community, consistently ranking among the nation's leading places to conduct business and enjoy life. Raleigh-Durham offers outstanding universities, a balanced economic base, and a skilled workforce. We often refer to this area as the Triangle. Now, it's nothing like the Bermuda Triangle, although people from out of town have been known to get lost on the Raleigh Beltline. Before we continue, let's look at a brief film about Research Triangle Park. The Research Triangle Park, the world's largest planned research park, is located in the center of the Raleigh-Durham ADI, linking the region's 15 municipalities. The park evolved from three North Carolina communities, all in the metro area, and their respective prestigious universities. North Carolina State University in Raleigh, the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, and Duke University in Durham. Since 1959, the Research Triangle Park has grown from an idea to a 6,800 acre center of research and development hosting over 33,000 scientists, technicians, and support personnel, including two Nobel laureates. Today, more than 50 major labs in the Research Triangle Park occupy an excess of 12 million square feet of floor space and represent a total investment of more than $2 billion. The combined annual salaries in the Research Triangle Park amount to over $1 billion making the Triangle 35th and highest per capita income in the nation. By the way, the Triangle also has the highest number of PhDs per capita in the country. Our brainy viewers are just a part of the Raleigh-Durham area, WPTF-TV's metro area. North Carolina is the nation's 10th most populous state. Two of our state's eight medium-sized cities are in the WPTF-TV metro area. Raleigh, the state capital, and Durham, also known as the City of Medicine. About 700,000 people reside in over 281,000 households in the Raleigh-Durham metro. The metro area's 1988 per capita income of over $18,000 was 126% of the state average. Actual consumer spending per household in the metro is over 17000 which is $1,400 more than the state average. WPTF-TV's metro areas clearly upscale. On another positive note, 43% of all retail sales in the ADI were made in the four metro counties by 37% of the ADI's population, leaving the other 18 rural counties to split the remainder. A special note to viewers of this program and other cities. On the following chart is a cost of living comparison between several areas in the United States and communities inside the metro viewing area. The national average is an index of 100. Suffolk County, New York represents a high of 155.7 and Houston, Texas represents below average with a 99.3. Cities like Los Angeles come in with 124.1 and Atlanta with 101.4 serving as indicators of cost of living in those regions. Chapel Hill falls in at 107.3, followed by Raleigh at 102.4, and then Durham at the norm with 100.4. This may help offer some perspective when viewing data on income and spending. 
Other economic indicators show a 1990 unemployment rate of 2.4 percent, compared to the national average of 5.4 percent. This is due in large part to the balanced distribution of employment in the economy and continuing industry growth in the triangle. The four largest areas of employment are services, government, trade, and manufacturing. Another fine desktop presentation. We have just a few more population stats before we go on. Raleigh-Durham ranks ninth in college dormitory populations. 11.6% of the population make up the 20 to 24 age group. Over 70,000 students are enrolled in the region's nine colleges and universities. This supports the percentage of people under age 35. Men and women of working age 20 to 64 make up 63.6% of the population, and it's far from retirement haven with 90.5% of the entire population under age 65. Before we continue with Arbitron and Nielsen and you, I'll have an economic forecast. But first, this word about the quality of life here in Central North Carolina. From the rolling western The Win Dixie Scholastic Athlete of the Week with Mark Parker, WPTF TV Sports. Maggie Petty gets a lot of attention on the Wilson Hunt soccer team, though not all of it's appreciated. But Petty has shaken it off to score 29 goals this season for the Warriors, 104 in her career. In the classroom, Petty carries a 3.3 grade average and hopes one day to be a teacher herself. Maggie Petty, this week's Scholastic Athlete of the Week. Catch this week's Scholastic Athlete on WPTF TV News primetime at 7 Friday. Now with a forecast of a different sort, here is meteorologist Chris Thompson with a 1991 market forecast for Raleigh-Durham. Thank you, Johnny, our mysterious voice for today. Things are still sunny. The Triangle area, while not recession-proof, may fare better than others in the state and nation. According to the Raleigh-Durham Regional Association, who furnished these figures, many economists see a recession shorter and milder than most, with a rebound in the latter half of 91. Looking at Wake County in the region, unemployment rates are projected to be 3% in 1991, compared to the projected national rate of 65 to 7%. Continuing recent trends, the unemployment rate in all likelihood will be among the lowest in the U.S., although it is a slight increase from last year's 2.5%. Now looking at retail sales, we have projected an increase of 4% to $3.56 billion in 91, based on previous non-boom years and excluding new car and truck sales. Now to wrap it all up, the economic forecast for 1991 reflect a continuation of stabilizing and consolidation of the past few years. Growth around here was super heated in the mid-1980s, but today we have moderate growth. We also have some fresh census figures just in. The percentage of growth from 1980 to 1990 in Wake County was 40.5%, compared to 31.7% for the region, 12.7% for the state, and to the U.S. average of 9.8%. Looks like the metro has a firm foundation. We'll look at some more hard figures from Arbitron and Nielsen in the final portion of our program. They were homesick and they were anxious for something to happen, but um, they were also, their spirits were very up. Just a great feeling that um, we got to cover something that was so important to this area. I know it made their family and friends feel good that their loved ones were okay over there. It gave me a feeling I've never had as a reporter. Congratulations to our Bob Phillips and photographer David Powell, winners of the 1990 North Carolina Associated Press Award for their news series, Fort Bragg Soldiers in Saudi. Okay. The metro audience inside WPTF-TV's viewing area is the driving force of the market. The folks with jobs, education, and disposable income that advertisers want to reach. An NBC affiliate, WPTF-TV is your most efficient vehicle for these viewers. If we look at the February 91 Nielsen's, we see in the metro a competitive and equal share in prime with WRAL, and nowhere near as much in rate. February Arbitron shows a similar distribution among all four stations, making WPTF-TV your metro station. 
Now that we have the Metro viewers well in hand, WPTF-TV takes a giant step forward in reaching outer communities as well. On January 2nd of 1991, WPTF-TV threw the power on at its new 2,000-foot tower in Auburn, North Carolina. A click of the switch instantly picked up an additional 53,000 households in average weekly circulation. The most extraordinary new 2,000-foot tower and transmitter in the country, the new WPTF TV 28 tower, weighing as much as 452 automobiles. Guy wires made up of over 1,027 miles of steel wires. A structure made to withstand more than 82 mile per hour winds, even when loaded with ice. The maximum in power, height, and strength allowed. The new WPTF TV 28 tower coming soon to your area. The key to the Raleigh-Durham ADI is its strong and stable metro market, WPTF-TV's metro market. WPTF-TV, the NBC affiliate, delivers the people here who are earning and spending good incomes. More than half of WPTF-TV's rating points are distributed inside the metro area, compared to significantly less from WRAL, WTVD, and WLFL, who skew more to the less affluent rural counties. To target your message directly to an advertiser's most valued audience, use WPTF-TV's Metro Power. That's our report. Thanks for watching.